And we welcome you back to this special edition of the Steve Malzberg Show. Don't worry, we got a little bit of Steve for you. He does have the night off, but he recently sat down with former Navy SEAL Kevin Lax. He's also the author of a great new book called The Last Punisher. And joining us right now, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Lace. He's a former Navy SEAL sniper, part of the SEAL Team 3, with, among others, American sniper Chris Kyle, author of The Last Punisher, brand new book, a SEAL Team 3 sniper's true account of the Battle of Ramadi. There it is on your TV screen. Welcome, sir. Steve, thanks for Great having me. Great to see you. You see were you. in the movie. I was. Uh, and you were with Chris Kyle. You were with uh, uh, Mark Lee. Um, first, before we get to all that, talk about... I mean, there's always a battle of Ramadi going on now. I mean, we lose it, we take it, we lose it, we take it. So far removed from the battle that you fought and how important that was at the time. Um, what goes through your mind when you see what's happening now? Well, it's, it's angering, it's frustrating. It should be for every single veteran that's ever fought in a war for this country. Every time we step on foreign soil, whether it's to liberate, whether it's to expand freedom and we give it back to the enemy, we've lost. And, you know, President Bush prophesied a long time ago that if we don't beat the enemy now, we're going to face somebody 10 times worse in the future, and we are. And, um, you know, it makes me mad. It should make everybody mad that served in this and wore in the uniform. Yeah, no, absolutely. And when you, you know, when you speak to uh, others uh, in, in your position, uh, there was no ISIS when you were back there, right? I mean, it was le us leaving Iraq and refusing to keep uh, uh, troops there and have a sofa with the Iraqi government uh, and many states because Obama and Hillary didn't want a sofa, not that they wouldn't give us one. Uh, that's led to the emergence of what Obama had called the JV team. And look where we are now. Right. You know, the reason why we won in Iraq, and you'll read in The Last Punisher, is that we didn't underestimate the enemy. We brought our full arsenal of attack. We used the Army, the Air Force, the Marines, special operations, and we brought the fight to the enemy. We hunted them down, we killed them, and we liberated Iraq. But we left the Iraqis with nothing to go forward. And what we did is we opened up a fertile place for ISIS to step forward. And Al-Qaeda is still a threat in, what, 90 countries throughout yeah. the world? Yeah. They're still a threat, and ISIS is now a threat as well, and they both bring terrorism to our country. When you uh, write a book like this, do you relive the good and the bad? Do you laugh and cry? What, what goes into writing uh, The Last Punisher? Well, I learned a lot as a writer when it came to writing this book. Um, you know, I had my wife, Lindsay, and I also had Ethan Rocky, a part of the process. Um, you have to do it. You have to laugh. You have to cry. You have to get to the details if you really want to show the story rather than tell the story to the reader. Um, you know, I, working on the movie, you know, Bradley Cooper, Clint told me, hey, put yourself in the viewer's shoes if you really want to convey the story. And I did the same um, as with the co-writers to put the reader you know, get in their shoes and, and feel where they're coming from. When you were advising uh, in the movie uh, uh, Bradley Cooper, uh, and then you also played yourself, a dual role almost, two responsibilities, what was the hardest part? Was it the advising or the playing yourself? You know, I think it was the advising because acting, it was just, I just had to be myself, you know, right. and I was the only SEAL on set, you know, I was the only SEAL actually acting in the movie, so that was that was easy, but, you know, I wanted to make sure that Bradley was getting, you know, uh, Chris down correctly, make sure that he was representing Chris well, um, and he, he had big shoes to fill, and I think he did a good job. When people read the book, what are they going to learn that they don't already think they know? You know, I think a lot of people have this perception of what SEALs are, that they always do everything perfectly. Um, you know, my career didn't start out perfectly. So if you've ever had any adversity, you know, whether it's struggling in college, you know, struggling elsewhere, you know, I struggled and then I found my direction. I was able to become a SEAL and do a lot of different things. Um, so a lot of people can pull that away. Um, and also, SEALs make mistakes. We're not completely perfect. Um, we do make mistakes, but we learn from them, and that's what makes us good at what we do. As police make mistakes. Absolutely. You know, um, we just try and protect and we do the best thing we can. You can't um, you know, judge everybody based on one person's actions. I read something. You are Mark Lee's, and we have Debbie Lee on the show all the time, Mark Lee's medic. Uh, so right away I would think you're some kind of doctor or have medical training. You have medical training as a SEAL, is that it? Yes. I, uh, I was a hospital corpsman and then I went to the Special Operations Combat Medic School. And after my time in the service, I went to the University of Connecticut and then went to Wake Forest and I'm a certified physician's assistant. What do you think when you hear that they take, they, they take medals away from Chris Kyle, they're, they're redoing the, the count on him. Does that seem right in, 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 in the wake of, of what, what happened to him and who he was? I mean, forget the movie, just the fact that he's a hero, like you're a hero. Uh, should they be doing that? No, it, it's... Um, Why you know, are they doing that? You know, there are bigger fish to fry. 
Um, you know, if you read the book, you're going to hear a lot, a lot about heroism, a lot about heroism from the people I served with, Mark Lee, Mike Monsoor, uh, Ryan Joe, Chris Kyle. Um, you know, a lot of heroism that goes without medals. And for a SEAL, the only medal you really worry about is the SEAL Trident, you know, the one that you earn. Um, for Chris, he never gave me a reason to doubt him or mistrust him, whether it's behind the gun in his words or his actions. Um, and I really think, and I, from what I saw, I was with Chris for two deployments. He earned one silver star and three bronze stars, but he was also at SEAL Team 3 for two more deployments right, right. Um, and when you read this book you'll see what Chris did um, and that's the, and that's the truth you uh, a Trump supporter you know um, we talk about Ty Woods in the book yeah. the last Punisher and Ty uh, put me through SEAL qualification training we knew Ty very well my wife and I were good friends of his um, to see him Glenn the rest of the guys in Benghazi be left behind um, I think you know that candidate Hillary does not have the leadership abilities um, she doesn't represent the people and I don't think she's a supporter of the US military so um, she does not have my vote does Donald Trump have your vote though I think he does and I think he'll be stronger with a, a running mate who um, you know he doesn't have any military experience General Flint you know what he, he needs to surround himself and I think he will with people that will listen and guide him in the right direction in foreign policy and that's what we need uh, Kevin great to see you sir see you. Thank, thank you very so much. much for coming up ladies and gentlemen the book the last Punisher here it is go get it and uh, appreciate it again He's holding it up, too. Thank you very much. Thank you.